I'm beach fishing in absolute paradise. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything that I'm doing. Today, I'm down at the beach. I've got some beautiful fresh squid, some beach worms, and also some fresh tailor that I caught. I'm gonna show you how I rig, how I bait. I'm gonna explain where I'm casting, why I'm casting, and give you all of the details. I'm fishing on a rising moon. I've got a high tide at 7 p.m., which is about an hour after dark, and I plan to fish the tide change, and I'm gonna put those beautiful baits out there in hope of something awesome. If you're enjoying these videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Let's get started. Well, I've actually got all my lines rigged and ready. Um, I'm not going to throw my two uh, larger lines out just yet. I want to let the sun get a little bit lower. I've got a little bit of time. It's uh, 20 to 5. And really, I'm wanting to sort of focus more on that tide change for a big fish. So initially, I'm just going to use this little flick rod. It's actually one of my squid rods, just with a small 2,500 reel. And uh, I'm going to use some, I'm just going to flick a few beach worms out, just play around with them for a little while. And um, then when the sun gets a bit lower, I'm going to see if I can pick up another tailor or two, because I expect, just on dark, there'll be tailor here. So I brought some pilchards down for that very purpose so that I could catch some fresh tailor. And my plan is later to put out a line with some of the fresh squid that I caught this morning and then also some fresh tailor fillets. And so I think that'll be a pretty good offering. But initially I'm just putting some worm on here as I often do and just gonna flick out. There's very little, um, there's virtually no structure on this beach because the sea is super flat. And the high tide tonight is 1.8 metres. So it's a pretty solid high tide. When, and you've got a, when you've got a, a big high tide like that and a flat sea, the beach is just gonna look like a lake, which is pretty much what it is. So I won't be casting my lines out very far. And there are, are a few waves breaking close to shore just near where I'm set up. So I'm just going to toss these worms sort of in that little white water area. We'll just see if there's anything sniffing around there. I have a two hook rig. I've just already put one worm bait on. Now I'm threading this worm onto the other hook. This is, um, I've used one worm to make two baits. It wasn't a very big worm. So this is the tail end of the worm. It's quite thin, but that's still an okay bait. So I've got that one, got another worm bait there as well. And this rod only has 10 pound braid on it, so it's kind of fun when you hook small to medium sized fish. So I've got my 10 pound braid, but I have got a slightly heavier fluorocarbon leader of around 15 pounds. I'm pretty sure it's 15 pounds. So now I'm just gonna just chill out and wait till prime time comes along. I saw that guy catch a salmon. Yeah, I just saw him land a salmon, so. There'll probably be some salmon out there. <laughs> well, I'm just going to flick it out near this little wave. Yeah, that's a good spot. I just landed in the just in the edge of the froth. Not that there's much froth, but I'm just going to really stay pretty close to shore and in, enjoy this beautiful location. It's not far from when I, where I live, but there's a whole bunch of beaches where not many people go. And every beach is good. You'll catch quality fish on pretty much every beach up and down the coast. Just got to um, have a basic strategy and you can do well. I've positioned myself next to the end of the beach, next to the rocks specifically. Because I have the structure of the rocks there where there's food, there's small fish that live there. And I'm going to put my beautiful baits out here at the end of the beach, just out from the rocks. So I'm hoping some large predatory fish like Mulloway might come sniffing along the edge or come in from the reef out the back and then just kind of work their way along the beach. So that's why I'm actually fishing where I am and not in the middle of the beach. And especially because it's so flat as well. 
I think if I was up in the middle of the beach, I'd still be fishing really close to the shore, right on the edge, in these conditions. That moon's looking pretty solid. Oh, yep, look at that. <laughs> He got off, actually. I think he got off. No. Okay, so. Okay, well, this is my second cast. So, it's always good to get bites. It's always exciting when you're fishing to get bites. See, this fish has swum right into the edge. Taking me along the beach. <laughs> Maybe you'll come back this way. Okay. Alrighty. I only got this light line, so it's a lot of fun though. I don't want to get too wet. Okay, come back. A healthy fighter, that's for sure. Very healthy fighter. I'll get there eventually. Come on, come in. Oh, the, that's the deal. I've got, I've actually got two fish. That's the, that's the issue. Pretty sure I've got two fish. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> what a scream. Okay, so I'm gonna try and not totally force this, but I'm going to try and bring this up and keep a bit of pressure on them while the wave's here, but oh, the line's so light. Come on. All right, here we go. A double banger. Double banger on 10-pound um, line. <laughs> How cool. Look at that. Two beautiful salmon on some lovely fresh beach worms. So that's my second cast. I'm, I am going to keep these salmon because I haven't eaten much fish in the last few days and we do like to eat them. So I'm going to get these guys off. And I probably should use a bit of salmon for bait tonight as well because they're so prevalent. They're a natural food source for big fish around here. So it'd be worth giving that a go. I just got a double hook up on salmon with my second cast. I've got my world's deadliest rig on my other rod over there. I'm gonna have another go with worms just for five minutes or so. And then as the sun's getting lower, I'm gonna put some pilchard on that deadliest rig with a view to catch some fresh tailor. I actually have not, I have not fished this beach before in any of my videos. So this is a, a virgin beach for Rogers fishing. We're going to cast near that wave over there. That's where I hooked those last two salmon. Because, hang on, no way. Now, there's very, few, there's very few waves breaking on this beach, so that's why I was deliberately casting into the, the, the wash zone and the white water. I may even have another double hookup.
And these guys are just heading south. They are just heading down the beach. I've got a couple of guys fishing down there, a couple of fellas are having some fun. It may not be a double. It'd be easier if it's not. Yeah, it's a single hookup. Oh, I'm just gonna, oh. Bring him up with this wave. Yeah. So, um, I hooked one this time, but my bait had barely touched the surface. I don't, even, I don't even think my bait was in the water five seconds then when I got a bite, so I'll rebait and chuck it out again. <laughs> so I'm just putting a bit more worm on this hook. I'm going to chuck it out again. But I, I deliberately cast into the, one of the few broken waves on this beach today, and my bait, I don't know, it was probably only five seconds before I... I had a fish. So I'd much rather cast there than just into some sort of dead water where, where there's no life or no, no action. And it, it, it certainly pay, it pays off uh, when you do that. So I whack this back out. So I'm going to cast in the same spot again. It's interesting looking out at this view because I lived on the northern beaches so long. That looks like from here, that looks like Long Reef headland from when you're at Narrabeen looking south to Long Reef. It just looks exactly like it's not, obviously. I'm a long way from Long Reef, but it looks just like Long Reef. Okay, what's going to happen now? We'll toss it back out there again, back over there where the waves break. Okay. Bite yet. <laughs> this is slow. I can relax now. I think. It's actually getting close to that time I should be chucking my other lines out. It's still two hours before high tide. That's a great time of the day. Just might wait a little bit longer. Thought I felt something then, but no. It'd be nice if a few more waves came in and broke over there, I reckon. There's a trick to getting a double hook up when you've got two hooks, if you want to catch two fish. I don't normally focus on it that much, but what happens is when you've got two baits and you get a bite and you hook a fish, you hook it and you just leave it there for a second because it's likely a school and that fish will be going like this and your bait will be moving around and then very often another fish will take the other bait. So you hook a fish and then you wait. That happens a lot with whiting. If you're whiting fishing and there's a reasonable amount of whiting going and you've got two hooks, hook one and then wait until you get a second take. And that's how you kind of can increase the, the amount of double hookups that you get when you're fishing. I think what happens often with the salmon is the schools of salmon patrol up and down the beach. Sometimes they'll sit in one spot and if you're fishing there you'll just get bite after bite. Other times as a school swims past, if you've got a bait out there you'll, you'll get a hot bite, you'll get a couple of bites while the school's there. Then the school will move along and then it'll come past again. I think it's a little bit, a little bit like that today. I had two casts where I got nailed straight away and now I'm just waiting. So, they'll be out there somewhere, but probably they've mo they're moving up and down the beach. I always keep a little sharpening stone in my backpack so that I can make sure that my hooks are sharp. Here I've got an 8.0 suicide hook, but I just want to um, give the tip a little, little bit of a sharpen. I dip this stone in the water 
So I'm just giving that inside of the tip a bit of a rub with the stone. Then I'm going to run the tip. So I'm using the stone here. I'm just rub rubbing the tip of the hook along the stone. Just wanting to get that tip nice and sharp. And then I like to do underneath the, the back part of the tip as well. Let's see if I can scratch my finger. Oh yeah. I scratch my fingernail with it. So I'm going to put a nice slab bait or a bit of squid on this. But these are very handy, these little um, sharpening stones. Um, there's a link for them on the products page of my website, rogersfishing.com. They're really cheap, inexpensive. They don't take up much room in your fishing bag. So a great little asset to have with you wherever you go fishing, uh, the, um, the sharpening stone. So this rod is ready to go. I've decided just to mix it up. I'm going to walk over next to the rocks here and flick these two worm baits on the sand pretty close to the rocks. I'm kind of aiming for about five or ten metres, maybe hopefully five metres out from the rocks on the sand, but on that sand corridor, it just might be interesting. Sometimes you pick up trevally and brim and different things in areas like that, so it's worth giving it a go. I'm trying to see where the actual rocks are in the sand. A little bit of a wave coming in. Because often, often at the end of um, beaches like this, you don't just have a straight wall of rocks. Often there's like a bit of a sprinkling of little bits of rock beside the end, so you can get snagged. So I'm not exactly sure how close I can go, but I don't mind. I'll whack it out there. Let's see if there's anything out of that little point. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's not a bad spot. I'm not that far out from the rocks at the end of the beach. It's the sort of place where you would get... Hang on, am I getting a bite already? Yeah, I am actually. Whoa, how's that? I wonder if it's a salmon again or something else. Wow. It might not be a salmon. That was in the water not very long. Okay, so if it jumps, we know it'll be a salmon. It f feels a little bit like that. But that's interesting, if it is a salmon, it was right next to the rocks. Yeah, it's feeling a little bit salmon-like. But I didn't get any bites over there before, but now as soon as I come over near the rocks, I get a hook up. Come here. What have I got? Yeah. Whoa! That got the back of my pants then. It's not what you want when it's getting dark. So it was another salmon, but I landed so close to the rocks then. It's uh, so, okay, well I will chuck back out there. Um, see if it happens again. Try that spot again. I'm getting quite a distance with this light line. Probably fishing the sink is probably fractionally heavy for this light line. Okay, so it hasn't been smashed. Hang on. Uh oh. Wow, that was a bit of a whack. Yeah, that was like that. All right, let's wait. It's unusual to get a bite like that and then not have them go on with it. Yep, here's a bite. Hang on, yep. Yep, here's a bite. 
Have I got it? That was interesting. Lots of bites then, but I didn't hook up. I think I need to actually wind in and put some more bait on. But certainly heaps of action here right at the end of the beach. I can see some rocks near the shore in the water and I'm casting beyond them. Just got to be careful I don't get stuck on them on the way in. Alright, now that's unusual that I didn't um, actually hook whatever that was. The worms I'm using I caught two days ago. And um, I've had them in my garage in a relatively cool spot. Um, just put them somewhere up off the ground where the ants can't get them, but they were still alive after two days. I really didn't do anything with them other than just leave them in the sand that I had them in at the beach, but the good thing was that they're perfectly good. They last a couple of days without much care. Now that's about the same spot as last time, so hopefully I'll get some more bites. Yeah, getting bites already. Look at that, look at that. Whack, 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 whack. Come on, swallow it. Got it this time. I'm going to walk away from the rocks because I want to draw the fish away. I want to draw it away from the rocks. Hang on, he got stuck on the rocks then. I nearly got snagged, I, could, I got stuck, actually got stuck on the rocks. Get out of the way of this wave. These waves have got a fair bit of force. Okay, bring him in with this wave. Oh, there you go. See, I mentioned that you can get trevally at the end of the beaches near the rocks. So that's a just a young trevally. I think that's what some of the bites were that I was getting before because they were quite rapid. Now he's not quite big enough to keep. They certainly are a beautiful fish. And as my friend Brian in Perth would say, it's a lovely little skippy. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking about tossing other baits out because it's getting to that time now. But you know, you can see that strategy of coming to the end of the beach and flicking in next to the rocks is really good. You can do that anywhere. I used to do that on the northern beaches a lot. At places like Warry Wood, Cook's Terrace, Mona Vale. Or in Bungan Beach as well. Any of those beaches. You can do this strategy in the right conditions if it's not too rough and you'll locate some fish. So there seems to have been a lot of little trevally lately, not many big ones. So it would be good to actually get a bigger one. Now I'm going to put it straight back in the same spot. See if there's something else. Yeah, that's going to land in the same spot. Okay, see how long it takes this time. There could be a school of those little trevally out there. I want to get away from those rocks. So I'm going to get a bit of an angle on this line away from the rocks at the end of the beach. 
because I cast really close to the rocks then. Okay, what have we got? It's not a salmon, I'm pretty sure. Get away, get away. Can't see it yet. It's feeling a bit like a brim, actually. That's what it feels like. It feels like a nice brim. And indeed, that's what it is. It's a lovely brim. So there you go. Casting next to the rocks at the end of the beach has produced three different species so far. We've got a black brim, we had a trevally and a salmon. So that's awesome. Three different species in about 15 minutes on beach worms. So um, it's time to switch over to my big fish late afternoon dark baits. So I'm going to go and start getting my other rods ready. So there are so many salmon out there. Obviously they're one of the natural baits. So I'm going to fillet this, take a fillet off this salmon. It's pretty rough. I'm not doing it for eating. I'm just running the knife along his backbone, whipping the fillet straight off like that. I've already taken the other side off. So maybe I'll let that, use that for burley. So I've got this lovely bit of salmon fillet here. I have scaled it. And I think maybe it's got a bit of a break in him there. I might actually cut him there and then get two nice kind of V-shaped pieces out of here. My knife is not too bad. Could be a little sharper. So I've got a couple of nice bits of salmon fillet there. I've got a bit of a chunky bit. I could maybe fillet this cut that into a couple of small pieces like that, get a couple of nice little chunks like that for bait as well. But I'm going to put one of these on. And I'll, uh, I'm going to put, when I went squidding this morning, I only fished for squid for about 30 minutes. I caught one, so I was happy with that. But I'm going to save him till a little bit later around the tide change. I'm going to put that beautiful fresh squid out. So I'll have a double pronged attack. I'll either have some tailor fillet uh, or some salmon fillet with the fresh squid. So that hook that I sharpened before is going to go in there. Hopefully, I'm going to um, put a half hitch around the top end of this fillet. So I'm actually going to put the hook all the way through like that. So I passed it through once up towards the top end of the piece. I'm going to put it through just below that a bit and then I'm going to spin it around and put it through the back end of the fillet so that the barb's sticking out. I'm really going to expose the barb a lot on this one. Then basically with a half hitch, all you're doing is you're making a loop over the top of itself like that. So it's just a loop, then you put that inside the loop and then just pull it tight like that and that will hold that and then the fillet won't slip down on the hook, it'll hold its position. So, my only concern about that bait is if there's some big tailor out there, they could bite me off. I have a 30 pound leader, but that doesn't last very long with tailor. And tailor like the moon, I'm actually not gonna cast this out very far. Because it's just not, um, not a lot going on. And I think the fish will come close to shore, so I'm just gonna flick it out. That may be even too far, I don't know, but, but that'll, that'll do. And I'll just set a moderate drag. Because if I'm not watching my rod and I get a hook up, I want a fish to be able to pull some line out, but not too easily. I'm going to put that in there. Now I'm going to get my other rod, which has the deadliest rig on it. Let's see if I can catch a tail or I'm going to put some pilchard on there. I have my world's deadliest rig, which this is the rig I've done a whole video on, where I have a 4 main hook with a stinger. The stinger floats, 
on the leader, it's not fixed. And the leader is made out of wire covered in nylon, so that if you hook tailor, etc., you don't get bitten off. So I'm not going to use this whole pilchard. I'm actually going to put the pilchard through, put the hook through like that, lay that alongside it, and use the small hook to pin the tail, not on the donkey, but pin the tail on the pilchard. So I'm going to pin that tail. So at the moment I've got two hooks in there, one there and one there, and I've got the, but I'm actually going to break the end off, just let a bit of that, all those goodies hang out. And I'll throw that in the water as an attractor. Yep, I think that's pretty good. Nice gentle little cast with that kind of two thirds of a pilchard for bait. Now let's just wait and see how long it takes to get a bite. I'm actually starting to feel a little bit cold, so I'm going to have to put my jacket on in a minute because that wind, that westerly wind, is pretty, got a little bit of a bite to it. Wow, this fish has gone sideways. I'm trying to see if it has any actually. Does it? It's not really fighting. It's waiting for this wave. That's what you call a Port Jackson shark. Can you see the spike on the top near his fin? See the spike there? See he's got a spike there and he has another spike down there on his back. And they've got very rubbery lips these things so it's going to turn him over. You can see you can see he's got like this cru these crusher plates. Then, if you've got your finger stuck in there, oh my gosh, it wouldn't do you much good. You can you can see the the kind of crushing teeth on the bottom and the crushing teeth on the top. So this is not what I want to catch. So I'm going to let this guy go. I've just got to remove the hook. I mean, I'm just going to cut the line because he swallowed the hook. Oh, and then let him go. I was actually just up the beach yapping to a couple of other fishermen, <laughs> having a yarn, and I hear, hey! Because my rod's falling over with this little Port Jackson. So I really didn't get hardly any of the fight. But I'm uh, just going to let him go in the water. Wait for a wave to wash up and wash him out. Here comes a wave. So I'm going to... Oh, off you go. Yeah, he swam away happily. He's all right. So, better whack another bait on and uh, not go and talk so much. There's something on there. <laughs> what has grabbed this line? It's another one of those big lazy, well it's not big actually, it's a, some lazy thing. Okay, so this is what's called a banjo ray. And this banjo ray is pretty small. This is just a small banjo ray. You can see, that, actually I'm just going to grab him. I'll hold him by the nose, try and get the hook out. I'll let go of it, mate. Let go of my hook. Beautiful. I'll just turn him over. You can see the markings. You can see the markings on this banjo, Ray. But they're also... The banjo rays are like vacuum cleaners. Um, and they kind of... Um, They are not really very desirable to catch. 
sometimes you just catch these one after the other. So I'm going to let this guy go. I actually lost everything. I saw my rod whacking like that. I came and picked it up and my line was completely slack and whatever had it had actually swum towards me and my line was completely slack. I started winding in, then I felt a big weight. I leaned into it and then um, the line parted. So I don't know what that was. Looks like I've got a re-rig. So I better do that quickly so I can get my bait back out in the water. It's a bit of fraying on the end of my line. It's quite frayed. Hello, here comes some water, I think. It's quite frayed just there. So, I don't know what's done that. There you go. I wonder if it's another one of those banjo. Banjo guys. Not very big by the feel of it. Where is it? Okay, so I'm bringing him up. Yeah, another little banjo. Man, those banjos, they're everywhere. Oh, look at that. <laughs> he spewed the bait up. <laughs> oh, well. Hold him by the nose. Okay, well, I'll let this little guy go. I got a fish. Okay, so I've just chucked out a ganged hook with pilchard on it. It feels like a tailor, which was what I was hoping to catch. So I'm going to wind it straight in actually, get it in quickly. So, yep, and that is what it is. It's a tailor. Look at that. Look at that little tailor there. Beautiful. I don't really have a hook on me big enough to put him on live. It wouldn't be a bad idea though. I've got a hook that'll go close to being big enough. I think. It's going to go on. Actually, I've got to push that one down a bit. I'm going to put that one through there. So he's got two hooks in him, then chuck him out. <laughs> this tailor is going out. Alrighty, so, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, I do have something on. Is it another banjo? What is it? Oh, it's gone right up the beach. It's gone sideways. I chucked out a uh, fresh squid head on this line and something has taken it right up the beach unless my friends have hooked me wow I think I've got their line how did that happen oh, it's he, he's got a big fish on I don't know how my line ended up down here. Oh, is that your line? Yeah. Yeah, somehow my line's ended up down here. I don't know, I don't know why. So you've got a whiting. Yeah. And there's a Port Jackson shark in the surf. So that's yours. Oh, that's a big Port Jackson. Look at that guy. He's huge. So that Port Jackson has swum down here. Whose line is that on? That's on yours, is 
Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a big Port Jackson. So that's. Um, <laughs> actually, you don't have a spare hand, do you? Um, I'm going to sort this poor Jackson. Oh, this guy is huge. Now I'm just going to see That's a big fella I had a, yeah, he's, he's got the squid head in his mouth oh, <laughs> Look at that thing That is, look, I won't put my finger in there Oh my goodness. Because I'm not going to be able to get my hook out of there. No, I'm just going to let this guy go. Oh, probably only about 25, maybe. Maybe 20. Yep. No way! <laughs> Check this out. I chucked out this live tailor and it just got smashed. Bitten in half, totally. Look at that. So undoubtedly that's a shark or something that's bitten this tailor in half. I've had so much action. I landed a massive Port Jackson shark, so big. A couple of banjo rays, actually two Port Jackson sharks. Five salmon, brim, trevally, so many fish. It's been a, a great session, but I'm absolutely frozen. It's blowing a gale. I've got a pair of shorts on. It's freezing out here. So I'm going to head home. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you next week with another video.